where are all the entry-level jobs in cybersecurity? And why do a majority of entry-level roles already ask for years of experience? And of course, the question of if there's so much need for cybersecurity talent out there, then why is it so hard for me to find a job? These three questions are probably the most top of mind, especially nowadays with the job market kind of on fire, with some companies having hiring freezes, doing layoffs, and with other companies still trying to grow and still trying to hire, but not being able to find that right talent for them. This video is going to touch on the very important questions around why it's so hard to find an entry-level job in cybersecurity for anyone who is currently in or looking to soon be in the job market. So first, I wanted to start off this video with a few really interesting statistics to make sure that we're all on the same page around entry-level jobs and what entry-level actually means. I think the most interesting metric to start off with is the fact that in one study, more than 60% of listings for entry-level software and IT service jobs required three or more years of experience. So 60% of entry-level jobs are already asking for three plus years of experience. Obviously, this adds fuel to the fire of are there even entry-level jobs nowadays? Or why does every entry-level job ask for years of experience when, when students are just coming out of a university program or a bootcamp program? they're most likely not going to have those actual years of experience that are relevant to the field itself, which is the reason why they went to school to learn the skills to be able to get a job in the field. This really ends up being the chicken and the egg. You need experience to get a job, but to get a job, you need experience, and it can really be a vicious cycle. A few other highlights from this study, entry-level job seekers estimate that about 55% of entry-level positions required three or more years of related work experience. 39% of them also feel extremely discouraged by entry-level jobs requiring multiple years of experience and of course from the company's perspective they just end up not being able to find the talent that they need because of the fact that they have these crazy years of experience expectations put on general entry-level roles and of course there is a stat that i always share about the 3.5 million cybersecurity jobs that will be open by 2025 i believe is the date but again many of those roles may look for experienced hires versus entry and early career hires and just speaking statistically cybersecurity in general as a career option has really only become popular in the last few decades, maybe even just in the last one or two decades. I know prior to that there were cybersecurity professionals, but it's never blown up to the scale where all companies now want a cybersecurity team or at least have a third party vendor that acts as their cybersecurity team. With so many data breaches and hackers and nation states out there that are trying to steal your data, trying to hack into your applications, many companies are taking cybersecurity a lot more seriously and they want to hire cybersecurity talent. But the problem is they're looking for talent that already has that experience so that they don't personally have to train them. And of course, that is a whole nother conversation that happens in many roles, not just in cybersecurity, but also across tech and even outside of tech. But that's also one of the biggest reasons why it's so hard to find that entry level cybersecurity job, especially when you're first starting out in your career because a lot of the roles that are hiring for cybersecurity, even for a general cybersecurity analyst role, some of the cybersecurity analyst job postings I've seen are looking for seven to 10 years of experience. And, and that was from the beginning of the year when I was looking for my next job in security. And it really does just blow my mind that, that some companies out there are asking for a minimum of seven to 10 years of experience for a cybersecurity analyst position. It honestly is very baffling. And of course, seeing job listings like this, it can definitely be very disheartening if you're currently in the job market, if you graduated college or graduated from a bootcamp recently and are looking to get that first job in cybersecurity. For anyone who is in that position, I actually have been working on a cybersecurity course on how to get your first job in cybersecurity. And I've been working on this for the last four to five months now. So I'm so excited to be able to share this with you. And for the first 10 days or so, we're having 25 percent off the entire course itself which provides all of my digital resources for cybersecurity careers as well as 10 video modules to walk you through everything that you need to get that first job in cybersecurity from resumes cover letters networking utilizing linkedin career guides interview prep as well as the actual job application process that I personally use to apply to apply for jobs in my early career. So if you're interested in checking out, I would really appreciate it. I'm so excited to finally get this out into the world after spending so many months on it. So hopefully this is helpful to you guys. And don't forget to use the code in the description for 25% off. 
All right, so now that we've covered the actual problem as a whole for entry-level jobs in cybersecurity or the lack thereof, I do want to go into some tips that may be able to help you still get your foot in the door for cybersecurity entry-level jobs, even with everything that I've said in the beginning of this video. The first thing is to pick generalist roles versus specialist roles. So a specialist is someone who is essentially a subject matter expert in a specific area, for example, in networking or digital forensics or malware prevention or identity and access management compared to a generalist who is who is kind of like a jack of all trades. They know a little bit about a lot of things and that is typically going to be your best bet for entry level roles. For example, if you really want to be a digital forensics analyst, but every analyst role that you find in digital forensics is asking for five years of experience, then I would really recommend to first go for a general cybersecurity analyst role before you go for a specialized role because specialized roles are notorious for asking for higher years of experience unless you're going into a specific program like a training program or a rotational program that a company has that is really looking to actually train their talent uh, then it's going to be really your best bet to go for a generalist role like a security analyst or an SOC analyst or, or even junior versions of specialized roles like junior pen testers, junior digital forensics analysts, junior threat intelligence analysts. There are going to be those junior level roles for specialized roles if you really do want to start your career at that level but personally i think as someone who is just starting in your cybersecurity career there may be things in cybersecurity that you may not have heard of during your college or bootcamp courses so it really is helpful to start as a generalist and be able to touch a various variety of different things and then go in and decide hey i actually find this area very interesting even though i had never heard of it before my current job and that could also help you narrow down which path that you want to go into in cybersecurity so that you don't have to go down a path for a specific a role and realize hey maybe this isn't exactly what i want to do and then make a pivot from there because by then you may have had experience in that area for a few years you may pigeonhole yourself a little bit just with the skills and the knowledge that you have so in my opinion or just from my experience i find that it's a lot easier to start out as a generalist in your entry level and early career and then move on and go into a more specialized role based on your interests and the different skills and knowledge that you pick up along the way the next thing is to take advantage of your network and make sure you're targeting certain areas of your network that are likely going to be able to help you for example things like teachers because teachers honestly are one of the best resources out there whether you're in a boot camp or in college as well as recruiters and hr they are also going to be a huge resource if you're connected with someone from maybe a career fair that you went to a few years ago it doesn't hurt to reach out to them on linkedin or via email and share your experience with them the types of roles that you're potentially looking for i think recruiters and professors are some of the best resources out there in your network and of course your peers i think especially in tech referral go a long way and it really is about your network and if someone you know in a cybersecurity role is able to refer you for another role in their company it really does help your odds of getting that job especially because it gives you a direct point of contact to the company and it's even better if they're able to link you up with an actual recruiter from the company to be able to talk about your skill sets your experience what you're interested in a role and the opportunities that they have available and of course before all this you really want to focus on your cover letter and your resume so if you guys didn't already know i do have my career resources linked in the description below for my cover letter template as well as my resume template but these two sheets of paper slash digital copy if you have them if you're using those instead which is likely the case are basically someone's glimpse into your professional and educational background as someone who has reviewed many different resumes when i was in college as well as full-time you would be surprised how many people don't actually put an emphasis on perfecting and keeping updated their resume before they even apply to a job or send their resume to a recruiter or send it to a friend for a referral your resume slash cover letter should be your best foot forward and you really want to portray your skills well and speak on your experiences eloquently whether it's your coursework, your personal projects, your personal website if it is linked on there, your LinkedIn if it's linked on there, as well as your past work experiences, your current work experiences, any conferences that you go to, any hackathons that you attend, any student organizations or leadership that you're a part of. All these things should be 
very well highlighted on your resume and you just want to make sure that you're putting your best foot forward before forwarding your resume or your cover letter to that recruiter or to that company and lastly taking advantage of career resources from your university or your boot camp as well as choosing the right career sites to search for job listings there are certain job sites out there that tend to have more experience level job listings compared to entry level or early career jobs so personally i do use various different job sites and there are a lot of them out there from dice.com to monster to indeed there's a lot of different job posting sites out there so making sure that you are able to find the one that's right for you with a lot of the roles that you're interested in is going to be very important and this will look different for everyone so i would just go on and look for the jobs that you're interested in specifically in cybersecurity for entry-level roles and check to see the quality of those job listings to see if they are actually entry-level or are looking for the skills and experiences that you have and career resources from your school slash bootcamp from career counselors to direct partnerships with different companies in your region as well as inviting companies to speak or recruit school career fairs these are all going to be important things that you want to keep note of if you're still a student and these are also the resources that i personally used when i was looking for my first full-time job for example the grace hopper conference which is a conference i attend every single year i only found out about that because my school was doing a scholarship where they were sending students to grace Hopper. And while I didn't know exactly what Grace Hopper was, I applied for the scholarship and was able to get it. And that was where I was able to meet various different companies and interview at companies that I would not have typically talked to or applied to even if it weren't for the Grace Hopper conference. And that was where I got my first software engineering internship at JP Morgan Chase, as well as my first cybersecurity job out of college. So definitely don't sleep on school resources and bootcamp resources, especially if they're made available to you. All right, so that's it for this video. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments below. Please don't forget to check out my course on how to get your first job in cybersecurity. It would really mean the world to me. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications. I post videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.